Hey everyone, it is Diane here from Neko Easy. Thank you so much for watching another video of us. Let's right jump into the challenge of today because I'm participating in a challenge from My Blessed Nest, which is Carol's channel, and I'm going to make a tie tray for St. Patrick's Day. Okay, here we are at the channel of Carol, the My Blessed Nest channel. I will go to the videos. Here, I really love the thumbnails. I think Jenny loves them too. I think I'm not sure because they have such bright colors. Oh, this is a new video, so I have to watch that one. Really, just the vintage spring decor. It is such an amazing video. Oh, I hope I have the sound off. Look at this. This is so cute. I wish I had items like this at home. It is beautiful. This is what Carol does actually all the time. She goes thrifting, especially the vintage items. And look, this is such a cute bunny. Carol, we love what you do. Uh, how can I go back to the main here? Yes. And I'll show you the community post. Here she has a reminder, but the original one is down here. Here, this is the original post. So this is what I'm going to do. St. Patrick's Day tight tray. And uh, yeah, just create, it says here, create a video of a tire tray for St. Patrick's Day. So these are the rules. Pause the image if you want to check them out yourself. Because I'll move on to the rest of the DIY. So this is my tray for today. I bet you remember it from the last time. In my previous tire tray uh, challenge, I repainted this one. It was silver before, but now it is black. I painted it with blackboard paint, and I think it is the perfect base to have a St. Patrick's Day tire tray. I have to be honest, uh, St. Patrick's Day isn't celebrated here in the Netherlands. Uh, I've heard of it before, but I actually never knew what it was. So I went to the internet and looked it up, so now I a little bit more understand what St. Patrick's Day is about. Uh, but more important for this um, this collab, I searched for St. Patrick's Day uh, decor for some inspiration. And I think I have to do something with leprechauns and I hope I didn't pronounce it right, or shamrocks. Um, so let's give it a try. I think I can do that. Um, I hope I have the right colors at home. Um, but we'll see how it turns out. I think it's going to be so much fun. I'm really enthusiastic about trying something new. So I went on Pinterest and searched quite a while to find some leprechauns which I found really cute. Well, I think this fella here together with this printable, they're both from Pinterest, are really cute. I'm going to print them out and glue them on a piece of cardboard because I don't have wood or a sign at, at hand at home right now. So. That is how I'm going to make really cute leprechauns for upon my tree. I'm hitting Word now, you know, Microsoft Word, and I have so many cute leprechaun and other prints that are free to use. I just glued everything more than once, except for this large one, uh, upon the on the paper because I want to make sure that if I cut something wrong, I still have the right image to peek or to reuse so better be safe than sorry Let's hey i have the printables here it's time to cut them out with a pair of scissors and then i you see the knife already here i'm going to search uh you know in my garage uh for some old cardboard um hopefully i still have some um and then I'm just going to glue everything up on the cardboard because then I have, you know, cute little signs throughout the whole tray. And yeah, the colors aren't exactly the same, but to be honest, I don't mind because you see it here, they have different kind of green colors. And I think it's pretty normal because that's what I also found when I was searching on the internet for printables. I was cutting for a while and I thought, hmm, is it really necessary that I'm cutting straight the line where the white meets the green? I don't think so. Well, but this is not a story, but 
I'm going to glue them upon cardboard and I'm also going to cut out the cardboard so why not gluing or cutting out both of them at the same time. So that's more efficient, so that is what I'm going to do for also for the gnomes here, or the leprechauns. I searched for gnome St. Patrick's Day, and then I found these, I think they're so cute. Oh. Now I make it myself a little bit more easy. Because as you can see, it's already getting dark, and I still hope I can film the part where I glue them upon the cardboard and maybe also cutting them out. If not, that is something for tomorrow then. The time to cut out the final print. In case you're wondering why did she have cut a black corner around a black line? Around the sign, well, that is for me making it easier to cut into a straight line. Because the background was white, I just did this in Word, by the way. Nothing difficult, just add a line around the print. And here we are, time to clean up the mess and come back with some cardboard for you. This is an old box which I thought I threw away, but luckily I still have it because this cardboard is really, really thick. Uh, I just cut out a flap. Oh, there goes my scissors. That is not important now. I just cut, a, cut out a flap which was still straight. That one isn't useful anymore. I believe this one is. So make sure that is on top of the cutting board. Don't mind your fingers. It's already loose on that part, not on this part. This is also suitable. Now let's see how much printables I can put on this. Well, maybe I'm not going to use all of them. Well, let's just use these two. Well, I have still a lot of gnomes left, but they're not going to fit in all together here. Well, maybe they do. This is the smallest one. Yes. Okay. Uh, that went quick, more quickly than I thought it would be. Now I'm going to use these cheap glue from a shop called Action, similar to Dollar Tree in the United States. Uh, this is similar to Mod Podge, but then much more cheaper because this was, bottle is one euro. And um, here I have a Mod Podge can, which is, well, here compare two and a half sizes larger than this one, but not two and a half si si times. Uh, more expensive than this one because this one is one euro and this one is 15 euros. So I always be smart. I use Mod Podge for sealing on top covers, you know, as the last layer, but this stuff is great for base glue, you know, gluing that upon the cardboard.
Okay, so the next day I uh, cut it out the rest last night and also a little bit this morning. Uh, here you see all the figures that I've cut out. Now it is time to cover them with Mod Podge. I just have an ordinary brush here and I'm going to Mod Podge them one by one. Really, these notes, uh, the cutting out was <laughs> quite, quite an, cost me quite an amount of time, but it was fun to do, relaxing also, just with a little bit of music on the side. And I had a lot of fun, but yeah, uh, next time I think I'm going to pick an ornament which is less, you know, detailed than this one. Because that makes it a little bit easier, but on the other hand, you get a challenge if you do it this way, of course. That is totally up to you. They're all dried and well, time to start decorating. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I'm really enthusiastic about this, but also pretty scared because I've never done something with St. Patrick's uh, Day decor before. So just let's see how it turns out. Uh, as I said, I all had to make all by myself. So yeah, it isn't the most high-end quality decor, but otherwise it was just fun to make everything myself. Um, yeah, which is nice. Okay, here we are with all the cut it out cardboard figures. I also have my sticky gum here um, because I think that is the most efficient way of putting the items upon the tray and secure them. Okay, I'm going to sort out everything. These were the hardest to cut out. You can see they're still a little bit squarish. Okay, I had in mind this one here at the top because that perfectly fits in there and then i think this one here at the bottom and this one here in the center so i have to secure them of course mm. not sure about where to put these maybe here and there and then two steps here well maybe i can just do it like that because when i Divide it throughout this way. There are all other figures on each level, so time to secure them with the butts. First one here is up. I cheated a little bit because I'm making a small support. Well, actually, it's a square about this size on the back of the cardboard. So I'm just doing this with some sticky gum. Put some sticky gum upon the square, then just press it. Is it the right? Yeah, this is the right size. Press it upon the back part. Well, it is a little bit too high, I think. You can also use a bigger one. I also made some bigger ones just in case. Let's see how this turns out. Yes, look. Now they can stand up easy. Just try to zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. And the other one there on top here is just supporting. This is its support and it can't go any further because it's stuck here in the tray. Okay, everything is up. The support squares also work fine for the gnomes. Well, all we have to glue this one. Mm. I think I'm going to do them on top and just securing them with a small piece of buddy. At least that's what we say in Dutch buddies instead of sticky gum. 
Just putting them here on the edges. Now, just gently press those shamrocks upon there. Oh. Maybe a little bit more like this. But they're easily divided now. Yes. Okay, great. Time to put up some more decor. I think of greenery. Okay, I'm further and further in the process. I decided that this here is the front. And on the back I just cover up the ugly parts with hydrangeas. With a little bit of imagination they look like shamrocks. Um, one thing that the hydrangeas come in bows like this. Uh, they're from AliExpress by the way. Which you can also, you know, here, easily pull off a smaller string of hydrangeas. And even you can pull up to this size with a, a small flower. So I use the larger ones to cover the back. And you can also just press it back together in case you don't need the smaller parts anymore. So you don't have to ruin your whole thing. Um, I also have some more greenery here. The famous, uh, how do you call that? I don't know the name in English for these plants. I only know them in Dutch, but but they're different in English. Uh, anyway, I think I'm going to cut off smaller pieces, you know, just like this, to cover up the lost black parts of the tray. Made a cute little scene with some greenery. This is how the tight tray turned out. Show also here on top. Find the shamrocks there in the back. And this cutest sign. Here is another sign with a lot of green and the three little gnomes. And we go to the other layer here. So that was it. Just let me know in the comment section what you think of it and don't forget to check out the other creators video. Okay, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, this DIY of a tie tray for St. Patrick's Day. To be honest, uh, I never worked with St. Patrick's Day decor before, but it was so much fun to do and make everything on my own. Thank you so much for hosting this, Carol. Check out Carol's playlist and also a link to her channel in the description box underneath here so you can check out what other creators made and also what kind of content Carol makes. Um, yes, well, Jenny and I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and give the video a big thumbs up. We hope to see you all safe and well in our next video. Bye, everyone!